Hello, I'm Daisy. I used to be a bunny at a famous brothel. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I was murdered and my spirit got trapped in my bunny ears. I woke up from my slumber when a young, somewhat strange guy put on my bunny ears. We quickly made a deal. He'll help me find out who killed me, and I'll help him with his relationships with women. I think he's getting a good deal. Could he be the Prince Charming who will whisk me away on his horse to my destiny? I remember Jess used to work as a female companion in her spare time at her house. She might still be doing it. What? I'm not going to hire her. Please. I've already talked to you about the reward, and we have a deal. Yes, that's true. I sent a message to the number Daisy gave me. Hey, how are you? I'd like to see you, preferably today. Hey, baby. Yeah. I'm free at 7p. If you want, you can come see me at my place. That'll be dollar 200 for 20 minutes. See you then. 200 dollars for 20 minutes. That's a fortune. It's necessary for the investigation. Think of it as an investment. But I won't get that money back. You're trading it for love? In many ways? <laughs> I hope we can at least find some clues about what happened to you. I went to the address Jess provided in her message, which according to Daisy, matches her residence. I brought the bunny ears in a bag, but I couldn't communicate with Daisy until I put them on. She surely knows what to do and how to gather information from this encounter, but I'm alone and I need to quickly figure out what to do. After ringing the doorbell and being lit in from the intercom, I went up to the fourth floor of the apartment. There, I found the door slightly open. I entered, feeling very scared. It was a small apartment with one bedroom and a bathroom. In the bedroom, there was a large-sized bed. There sat Jess, dressed as a cat, waiting for me. Hey, baby! Come in! Don't be afraid! I entered the room, unable to speak, completely in shock. How long were you planning to stay? I tried to speak, but I couldn't. I was completely paralyzed. It was my first encounter with a woman, and I didn't know what to do or say. Don't be scared, babe. I won't bite. Meow! I awkwardly took out dollar two hundred from my pocket and handed it to her. Jess closed the door behind me. She said she would freshen up in the bathroom for a moment. I decided to stick to the plan I had in mind, looking around the room in hopes of finding some clues. I was so nervous that I realized I hadn't let go of the bag with the bunny ears yet, but a cold sensation on the side of my body alerted me. Jess had left her phone on the bed, and now she was in the bathroom changing. My body started transforming, changing into Daisy's form. Wow, I see you wasted no time. How was Jess? Nothing has happened. She's still in the bathroom, but I have her phone. Awesome! You're a genius. I've seen her enter her passcode many times. Ah, yes! 1202! Her birthday! I entered the number into her phone, and it worked. I had full access. I let Daisy take control of my body so she could do her investigation. She discovered some recent messages between Jess and her ex-boyfriend. She sent those messages, along with all the files in the downloads folder, to my phone via message. Jess had added my number when we communicated earlier that day. As the files and messages started to transfer, a noise from the bathroom indicated that Jess was about to come out, so Daisy turned off the phone screen. I quickly took off the bunny ears. And as my male body reappeared on the bed, I left the phone on the nightstand. When Jess came out of the bathroom, I was lying face down on the bed. Ah, sweetheart. I didn't know you were looking for that service. You should have told me earlier, but you're lucky. Why well, do it too? And at the same price. No, no. There's a misunderstanding. No misunderstanding, baby. Now that I know what you like, I want you to have a good time. Luckily, Jess was just joking. She treated me very well. I was so nervous that I hardly spoke or moved. I think she was even worried about my stillness. She might have been afraid I would faint. I think my innocence touched her. When my shift was over, I left the room and exit the building. Soon, I checked my phone to ensure that the files and messages had been sent. And yes, we succeeded! Before Jess could realize it, I downloaded all the files and communications to my phone, just in case she deleted them. Once at home, I put on the cat ears, and together we started analyzing them. She's seducing my ex! I knew it! 
I don't understand why it bothers you so much if she's your ex. Plus, you're dead. Yes! That's true! It's just that I can't stand her wanting to keep what was mine! People are not possessions. Don't defend her! Have you fallen in love with her? Yes! You've fallen in love! Is she going to take away my new vessel too? She will leave me alone even though I'm dead. No, calm down. I will keep my word. I would never let attraction to another woman prevent me from fulfilling my promise. Although I do wish I had a girlfriend like her. I hope you fulfill yours later. Yes, I'm a person of my word. Don't doubt that I will. While reviewing the files, we found something very interesting. Jess is also investigating Daisy's death. She suspects her ex-boyfriend and wants to go out with him to find out if he killed her. But why does Jess care so much about her competitor's death? Thank you so much to all my Patreon and DeviantArt supporters. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. Please subscribe, give me a like, and share my content on social media. If you want to see what I can show you here, you can find me on Patreon and DeviantArt. Links in the description. If you want to support the channel, you can make a donation through the thanks button. Thank you so much for your love. See you tomorrow.